What is it? I Yo. Know. Yo. Yo. Hey, watch it out. No. Although, I don't know which. Hold on. You there? Yeah, man. You right? Yeah, yeah. I just needed to make sure we could hear you, but the mic, you're not loud enough so the mic will pick you up. Yeah, I can, I can hear me. You're good. Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear me echoing as well. Oh, you can? Hey, that should probably fix that. So what's going on? Just had a nap. That's what it is. Not much. Brett just got out of church. Hallelujah. Yeah, man. I'm thinking of joining. Amen. Amen, brother. I, yeah. had, to, I had to go pray for my own soul because I'm a selfish. That that was one of the things from last week. Pa Paul was talking about how, the power of Jesus. No, I was talking about starting a men's club in the church, man. That's the way to go. A men's club in the church. That's a good, that's, yeah, yeah. They have them. That's that one yeah. guy that calls at work, uh, Bob. He goes to one of those, like well, a men's well, sort of well, club. It's a, that's a that's a good that's thing. Where, that's, where, that's where I'm heading because I want to be. Waco spell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Waco. Yeah, but hopefully it'll end a bit uh, Oh, man. I, I see if you, oh, there Let's we see go. See if that helps Let's it. See if we can hear him better. That should be better. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I, like I was saying oh, earlier. I'm, I'm just here to listen to you go off on Catherine. Oh, oh, all right. Well, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I mean, I, I could, I could today? go off on the Supreme Court nonsense. Oh. Like it just, and it's funny because even when when Chris just stopped by, I was talking about it, where we were really saying how it's really this war against men and women. The reverse or the McCarthy trial. I mean, well, yeah. There's there's the level of McCarthyism, but it's like, well, first off. I just really wonder with young voters and Kamikaze, stuff. McCarthy. When you see when you see Cory Booker uh, questioning Kavanaugh and being like, "So, are you meaning to tell me you drank beers on a Wednesday in college?" I did not drink beers in the, how, on a Wednesday how, night. How many how <laughs> many beers does it take you to get blacked out? Like this is these are the liberals. This is the party of Obama and well, you you're, can yeah. just test that. You know, when I... Could, I, I could run a test. He's like, when I was in college... I was in college and some beer in a webcam, and we'll check that out. If, I mean, when you had Obama being like, well, yeah, when I was in college, I just did a little blow. It, it wasn't anything. And they were like, oh, yeah, yeah, doing coke in college is fine. You had a beer, and you... Do you remember every moment of every intoxicating beer-drinking second of your teenage life? And it's like... What the fuck is this? Like, Good I mean, God. these people will ruin you over anything. Like, I mean, next thing you know it's going to be, it's going to be like, was your shoe ever untied once on a Tuesday? Disqualified. Disqualified. Like, yeah. I mean, I just, you just can't believe it. And then all this stuff, have you seen the things coming out about the woman Christine Blase Ford, or should I say Paula Ford, because that's oh, what her. Sorry, 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 I've got to stop. I've got some breaking news here. Come from the phone. Hang on. Let me just check this out. Was that 20 years ago? Hang on, I've got an anonymous story. This is breaking. It's coming from the Russians. Don't let Paul fool you. Oh, man. It was right 20 years ago. Kavanaugh was. He was there. The unicorn. He's Forrest Gump. This is breaking news, guys. Well, and now the funnier thing, I don't know if I said this last week or not, but I mentioned it to a friend of mine. You know why these allegations weren't presented 
20 or 30 years ago because in the 70s or 80s if a woman walked into a police station and said officer officer i need help what's wrong ma'am how can i help you i i was at this college party and we were drinking and this guy he pulled his dick out and what did he do anything else with it no he just pulled it out and it was there and i saw it Dude. Okay. Yeah. And you want me to do? I feel raped. But it you weren't. Like a mushroom. Yeah, it looked like a baby's arm holding an apple. Listen. Oh. I, listen, this is serious. Business. I mean, I've been traumatized by the sight of breasts. I mean, I really hope. No, you know what I said? I said I really hope the FBI does this investigation, and it boils down I've to this sort of pseudo Nazi esque. We got to check on his penis thing. And I want it to come out where they're like, they question the women and they're all spiteful. And they're like, oh, well, you know, yeah, we saw Kavanaugh's penis. It was little. It was itty bitty. And then the FBI being like, Kavanaugh, you got to show us the goods. And then just this 10 foot dong falls out. And it's like, he's hung like a horse. Like, I would love for that to be the conclusion of it. Like, Brett Kavanaugh world's biggest dick you know, the, like the worst part is all these little gifts that are coming out where they have the they have the thing with the pulp fiction and brett and then my name is brett so i hear it and i yeah. hear the brett thing and then i see that i'm like oh my god i i love this the ones bad. where it's like Man. where it's like <laughs> woman se woman me? sees a penis at, drunken at a college party traumatized for life Little girl sees a transgender dick in the bathroom and it's like, shut up, you intolerant bigot. Like, it's so funny how none of the leftist nonsense makes any sense. But what I was saying with uh, Christine Ford, now they're tracing her back where supposedly her whole family is tied in with the CIA, including her. They're saying she's not a registered psychologist in California, which she claimed to be, so she perjured herself on that one. Um, and then you also have it where supposedly her and her husband are very invested in abortion drugs. So, you know, there's the huh. frenzy over the idea of the Supreme Court turning the clock back on abortion, which I don't think they can really practically do, but that does add fuel to the fire. I did think it was interesting, and God bless her, Nicole Arbor was on Louder with Crowder, and she came right out and said, When a woman talks like this... Especially to a cop, it's because she's trying to get away with something or to convince you of something. Sounds because sounds that's convinced. not how women really talk. And she's right. That's the, that's the woman. I'm sorry, officer. Did I do something wrong? Like, it's, it was such a fake contrived voice. Like, and again, Cory Booker and Kamala Harris. Wait, wait. I'm still pissed at Kamala Harris during the original Senate hearing of, so if, did you ever talk to anyone about the most publicized news story of the past two years? Have you ever talked to anyone at this firm? He's like, I need to know who works there. I talk to people and lawyers all the time. I'm in these circles. Well, have you ever talked to anyone? He's like, who are you getting at? What is your point? Who do you think I talk to? I'm asking you a question. You can't answer. Have you ever talked to anyone about the the Manafort, you know, whatever? Try Fuck all these people. I really hope all of these Democrats lose their seats. And I had a friend ask me, can Trump pardon Kavanaugh if he gets convicted? I said, convicted? This isn't even a trial. This, they, they are not even bringing charges against him. This is the Democrats rallying for the midterms. This is their rallying cry. I just had another friend actually text me and ask, why, do you know why there's all these black boxed Facebook profile pics? And I'm like, yeah, what are you what talking about? I said, all, all, a ton of my friends have black boxes for their p Facebook profiles. I said, I, I don't know what that's all about. I look up, look it up. It's I, all I find are articles from 2016 about that was there, black out your Facebook to resist Trump, the resistance, blah, blah, blah. And I guess they're now bringing that back because again, the Democrats don't have a platform. They don't have anything to sell anyone on. They don't have any good ideas. So they have turned ruining this man's life into their rallying cry 
for their midterm re-elections. And it's disgusting. Side note, you know what else really bothers me? I've been lately playing the new Call of Duty game, which is set in World War II against Nazis. Let me tell you, you're not some good old boy Americans fighting Nazis. You're part of Le Resistance! The French Resistance! And you're a lady! A lady in Le Resistance! The resistance against the Nazis. The French can fuck off. Yeah, I know the French can fuck off. They're the ones that have ruined the world. <laughs> They're non-stop threatening us still. I gotta get more coffee. I gotta really? This, 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 this one for the France supposed to take it. Pardon. Pardon. Yeah, I wouldn't mind a war. Yeah. I just, you know, it's it aggravates me. I I know some music. Yeah, I remember, they attacked our our um, fishing ship boats, didn't they? Did you see that? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know why we just don't boycott the French because, like, what are we gonna miss out? Shitty wine, and fucking crap cheese. Yeah. Boy Not gonna miss out on anything. Like, I know some French music producers, and it's funny. I posted something about climate change and all of that. And they, they just came to me and were like, climate change is real. How could you debate it? Blah, blah. And I said, I'm not. I said, but I just post a scientist who's picking apart the details like a PragerU video I posted. And I told them, I said, you know, people don't realize, like, my guitar stand is made out of a recycled pallet. My bed frame is made out of recycled wood. I am the most unwasteful use it and reuse it and repurpose it and DIY and you know everything like that I am so environmental and like earth conscious when people come to me like I, I'm pro pollution or something they don't realize how much of asses they're making of themselves and I just tell them all the time if, if people were putting forth good green initiatives you'd have my backing a thousand percent but when it's like well, let's just give the government money and somehow they're going to suck the carbon out of the atmosphere or we're just going to pay for carbon indulgences. I'm like, this is a scam. And no matter what amount of virtue signaling you do, it isn't going to to do a thing. But like the French, because, you know, it was the Paris Climate Accords. They're all about it, even though they don't have a fucking clue about anything. Yeah, all right. Kavanaugh. Back to Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh. I'm worried. <clears throat> I'm more so worried about the ripple effect because now think of it like this. They say that women. What was that? He groped. He groped you. <laughs> or did I grope you? Yeah. You did. We're going to need an FBI investigation he, he, into uh, this. I, the, the Manchurian candidate. I got Manchurian candidate and, candidate and then groped Paul. <laughs> I thought it was funny. I actually, there was some woman on Tucker Carlson's show that ke he kept asking her, is this the world you want to live in? where we can destroy people's lives over mere accusations. And she's like, well, I think it's good because I immediately went on Twitter and I was like, this woman molested me 10 years ago when I was blacked out drunk. I just laid there. I went numb and cold and couldn't move. And she groped me and did this. I, I really think that's what people on the right side of the aisle should do. We need to just start set our morals aside and just start leveling accusations at everyone two can play that game i know people hate it and it really like it's it's moments like this that make me hate right-wing people because of their you know my uh what's the what's the term i'm looking for not priorities not privilege my principles, principles. but my principles i'm more principled than them and i'm just like well you're a loser you're gonna be a loser you have people that have no principles whatsoever yeah. that are engaging in a blood sport and you're just like, oh, but my principles, like, I'm not, you know, I can't do anything. I can't fight back. Like, I'm very much in line with Gavin McGinnis and Mike Cernovich. You need to fight fire with fire. 
I don't think I'd really, because I'm in England, so I don't know if I really get this stuff. So there's, there's a couple of things on the fan. Like, have you seen all her high school photos of the Virgin Mary? I, I did see some of them. Have you seen her butt naked on the boat? Photos? No, those ones I haven't seen. Who's buck naked on a boat? The woman who's accusing uh, Kavanaugh. It looks like she used to be a prostitute, like an underage one, and like into adult life. Yeah, all right, so think of it like this, Brett. The way this is coming across is, it was basically like, imagine Our Lady of Lords on steroids, as far as sexual promiscuity and all that and everything. Because this is, these are very wealthy school districts and stuff in the Boston, in, in Massachusetts and everything. So it's like you basically are having like private school, you know, let me look up my skirt, you know, everyone right. doing all this other stuff. Like, here's the thing. We went to the inner city kind of ghetto school and it had its problems, but the local Catholic high school, super sluts. I mean, they were just like, you know, because it's, again, it's all that sort of sexual repression stuff that just sort of ends up spilling out. And that's what I think has gone on, like we're talking about with They're these kids. in the cuties. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I was engaged to cuties. one of them for, for a while. There's um, definitely cuties from Lords, man. But, but it's like, that's what's going on with this Kavanaugh thing, where you have these kids who are just wealth and money and, you know, whatever else, and they're all just fucking gang-wasted and fucking. And, like, it's a, I mean, and the thing is, is, like, all the stuff that's come out about this woman is basically that she was just a prostitute. Oh, like, really? Yeah. Because I, I, I watched she was, them... Like, terrified of a penis. And I only <laughs> saw, like, the... the, the thing where it was like a lot of people were like oh it took courage for them to stand up there and i was like okay i was like at first i thought it was bill cosby yeah damn near a million dollars worth of courage on her gofundme page right now i, th I thought it was bill cosby at first because <laughs> uh, i've just been I, I don't know why it, it's nothing against bill it just Hannah, his face is just so funny to me like uh, I, I, Bill, like, I grew up on Bill. One, see, and I loved Lindsey Graham's... It when, cracks me up. Lindsey Graham, he did you a know, really great speech during the Kavanaugh hearing, where he said, he said, you know, we're hearing this testimony and all of these accusations like you were Bill Cosby in high school. <laughs> he said, and now, he said, far be it from me, he said, but if you... If you are the type to drug women and rape them for two years in high school, running and then you what? You just stop? Just running a rape gang. Yeah. He said, you're drugging and raping women and running a rape gang in high school, and then what? You just stop? He said, no. People like that do that all through oh, their lives until they yeah. are stopped. Yeah. No, that's a, that's a... That's kind of yeah. compulsion. Lindsey Graham went on fire for like a good 10 minutes where he just went off on everyone. He even said, he said, tell Kagan and the other one, Lindsey says hi, because I voted for them. He said, I, I, we didn't do this nonsense for the other picks. When there's a liberal judge going on there, we just look at whether they're qualified or not. Bill the he was, Bill. oh man, that clip of Lindsey Graham was amazing. Lindsey Graham. Yeah. So, like she was saying, like she can't remember where the party was. She can't remember where it was. And if she had some witnesses come forward, they can't remember it. Yeah, so they all deny it. it. Yeah, but she remembers it. It all came about because a the therapist triggered a, a blocked memory. It's all blocked. But she's such a delicate virgin. And Wait, then, what? And this is what happened. So, like this way, I thought like, I could be wrong. But, like, she can't remember where she was raped. Oh. Uh, she can't remember when it was. Right. And then she had these witnesses, and then the witnesses said, oh, we remember it. And then the reason she's got the memories, the reason she does remember, the memories have to come from somewhere. Some therapist triggered it during the session. Oh, right. Really yeah, during, like, a hypnotist and repressed. She was seeing a therapist go for a divorce break. That's right. I, I do. I do remember hearing that. There. And then she supposedly. And then, but I've seen all sorts of crazy stories. Like then she supposedly told her husband and was like, "I'm worried he might end up on the Supreme Court someday." Like as if she had a crystal ball or something. Like, 
because it said she was saying stuff like that when Obama was still in office. Like, why would she have even... And now it also came out, though, that I guess a while back, her lawyer came out and said, you know, if if Kavanaugh gets appointed to the Supreme Court, we have a we plan. Got, we have a plan. Or... We have a, yeah, I, I heard about that. It... It's a lawyer hanging around with Clinton. Well, yeah, that's the other thing. The lawyers are very tied in with the Clintons and everything like that. And, you know, Cory Booker even tried pushing Kavanaugh. That was the other thing that's so... Oh, my God. I'll tell you what. I, I hate to sound like one of these liberals, but I really feel like at this point, if Kamala Harris or Cory Booker ever become president, I will leave the country. Or I, I will just... I it's Because those two are in fucking sufferable. Like, I just can't handle... Like, Cory Booker being like... So let me get this straight. You're not saying the same question I just asked you three times over, and I'm just going to ask it again and again and again, so the media has some good sound bites to make me look like I'm holding your feet to the fire. Like, it was just, I hate all this fucking political peacocking bullshit. Where, did you, uh, this see... I'm getting lost. This is why I don't get it. So, I understand that this woman like get on the front page of Inquirer, Choir magazine, this shit. How did it end up being this serious? Trump like, derangement like, syndrome. Yeah, but no one's that deranged. Dude. Come on. I I think it's you know the media has this sick way of trying to think that they can manifest reality. Are you trying to tell me I'm going to do what that other guy does? Are you telling me that, that there are people that stupid? Because someone had to sign this off. Yeah. They they are hoping. They are hoping. They've even helped manipulate the story. And they've signed it up. Give me a break. I mean, even the, even the whole thing where it's like, this woman didn't go to the authorities. She went to Diane Feinstein and the Washington Post about it. Like come on like and it's it's really it, it's it's sick that the media are even paying attention to it and giving it credibility and that's the thing the media figure if they sign on to it and if they keep pushing it and keep saying Kavanaugh's a sexual accuser he's a sexual accuser that it will eventually happen now the thing i think is great is have you heard about um the idea that uh, Michael Avenatti, the creepy porn lawyer, was pranked by 4chan. Why have Kavanaugh's on it, in on it as well? Huh? Why have Kavanaugh's in on it as well? And Trump's in on it. But there's some, like, like, no one's that fucking dumb to, sign, to say that this was a good idea. They're just... I, I mean... The thing is, though, is it's it's. Like, a... Hasn't he got some woman who's more conservative? Isn't she gonna slide in out of the woman that Trump wanted in the first? Place? Well, that's see, that's what that's what people are saying that Trump should do is that he should say, okay, we'll take down Kavanaugh and put in. Uh... I don't remember who this woman is, but. She... And then I wonder what indictments um, they're gonna end up open on Kavanaugh. I think you might see that he's really close to like people like Bush. And the Clintons. I, I think it's got a lot more day. I think these sealed indictments, I think it might force you know, the FBI to start opening them. Well, I mean, the FBI's investigated him six times already. There's nothing they're going to find now. But a funny thing, Pete, I did see a meme going around saying is that maybe Trump should nominate Hillary Clinton to the Supreme Court so we can actually get a real investigation into her. Yeah. I'm getting doubts about Trump more and more. I don't know. I don't, I don't really have okay. any issues. I think he's doing what he's supposed to do. But I, I just think this is all... This is all just, you know, the Democrats using this as a rallying point for the midterm elections. It's them trying to get their base together, but I think it's going to backfire on them. Like, I think what they're really rallying is a red wave. It's just, what worries me is it's just a TV show. 
Well, now, now that's interesting you, you bring that up because I had said that too. I said for the people that were accusing Trump of being a reality TV star and trying to say, you know, the White House isn't a reality show and all this, it's what they've turned everything into. Yeah. And to me, it proves that Trump, if it, it is, it's the same problem we had with Obama and Bush. It's like the two had monster. Well, I, I, I don't see that. I, I don't know how you get to that point from this. I get to that point because things are heating up quick again, thanks to Trump. Like, um, he is going against his word here about being national. Like, He's, he's mucking around in Syria again, and he's mucking around with Iran. And it's just pissing me off a little bit. I mean, that's a, see, that's the thing is I I'm not as clued into what he's doing as far as the the global conflicts and stuff. But I mean, it's like I I've just always sort of looked at those two things as it's like those are like balls that were in motion. There's no way you can just have a a full stop on certain things. Um, you know, like, you gotta you got find a resolution to the Syrian c c conflict. Um, and the whole thing with Iran, I mean, that, I'm not even as clued in on what Obama was doing with them, where he was giving them tons of money, and, you know, the whole trading the prisoners and all of that business. I don't know what the whole, whole deal with that was. Um... I do think it's interesting, though, as a side note, that I just found out, um, I just saw old Project Veritas clips where they got, like, Susan Sarandon and all these other, um, celebrities and stuff to take money from a guy that was posing as a Middle Eastern, like, one of these oil families, and him basically being like, you know, we'll fund a, an anti-fracking movie because we need propaganda out there to convince Americans that they shouldn't want to be energy uh, independent, so that way they depend on the Middle East more and more. And all those celebrities are like, oh, yeah, sure, yeah, sure. You know, not thinking like, okay, so you're against fracking in America, but you'd be fine with them doing it in Saudi Arabia or, or Iran or wherever else. Like, so I, I don't know. I think... I, I know we're more and more energy independent. America's producing its own energy, so I know that's got to piss off a bunch of people in the Middle East and stuff. I don't know if it's worth going to war over. That, that's what I, I need to put a disclaimer on it. That's where I think it's going. That's why there is no platform to the Democrat Party. There is no platform. Like, it's the same in England, like, when you look at how Brexit's going. Like, that's a big conversation. It's like, it's like there's no resistance. And the reason is because they know that we're not going to make it past 2020. There's just no way Europe's going to make it past 2020. It's like Germany's um, in a real dire state. Like they're expecting 40,000 migrants to go through just this weekend. So they're putting like, troops out there. Mm -hmm. That's like asking for help. Got, um... America putting troops in uh, Poland. Poland that's for America to be based there. You got Spain's on like massive protests for the of Spain went out. And they're getting all the migrants are having to flood into Spain now because all the other routes have been closed off. You look at how Brexit's going, there's like Boris Johnson's declared war on Theresa May. Mm -hmm. Boris Johnson's put Theresa May delusion. So that means our government is running the country in a civil war. Yeah. And the UK are going to win. I know many people laugh when I say it, but the UK are going to fucking storm it. Well, and plus you and look at... People can't see it. Tommy Robertson signed up now. Oh, did he? Yeah. Wow. I told you that was going to happen. How long ago did I say Yeah, no, you said that a while ago. I said it over and over. Paul Joseph Watson signed up. And so did Sargon. Yeah. And I mean, and that's the thing is like the. Dracula did a really good speech. It really appealed. And it's so amazing that these parties know that like so they've. Butler is doing is um, just 
ripping it on Sky News about Islam. It's like not holding back. That's Sky News. Man. Yeah. He's talking, he sounds just like Tommy Robinson. And what, where's the resistance to this? To these men, Boris Johnson and Squatland. That's not a resistance. Jeremy Corbyn is the resistance. And you see her saying with Trump. It's just like, it's like the resistance is a joke on her. Le resistance. And they must know. I, I don't know. Maybe it's because my screen seems weird, but I, I think like we like we've got a front row seat to the collapse, and it's going to happen like from October, like I'm saying tomorrow almost. So what happens when, like, we're expected to leave uh, the European Union in a couple of months? What happens what? to e yeah England, England? Yeah, collapses, man. Gone. I don't know. I'm not saying like, that I want it there. Like, Germany's gone, Sweden's gone, Italy voted out and they can't get it, Greece is on fire and they want out, Spain wants out, they're rioting, Romania's out, uh, Poland's out, uh, Hungary's out, Hungary's built a massive wall, uh, Norway was never in it, Switzerland was never in it. Yeah. I mean. France is just a shithole. I see, but the thing is, is I I kind of I kind of like Vox Day's sentiment. Like I forget where he's living. I think Italy or something. And people asked him why why Italy of all the countries, and he says, "I like living in my country's post collapse because the only place to go is <laughs> up." <laughs> like he said, I'd rather be somewhere that's already bottomed out and is only can only go up than somewhere that has a long way to go down. And I mean, that's, that's the thing. That's a good logic. I, like, that's a logic. I, no, but you're talking about Italy, man. Like, Italy is like the only place where they're yeah. like, proper national, nationalistic. Like, it's like Ferrari, they all smoke outside like Italian cars. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The only place in Europe where, you know, Germans aren't German, French aren't. The French are always in the right so they check that out. Italy and, and England, England at one point actually kind of had that yeah. type of style, like style of na like not nationalism of like of the complete extreme, but like the pride in the in the country, yeah, you know, in the production and Italy's lost its identity. It's gone. Well, I do think um, I I do agree with that as far as the. Um, identity thing i mean americans like it's something where like the people like i don't know it's weird because i feel like i've kind of grown into like identifying as an american because the thing is is we're we've always been taught to feel shame about it like i mean we get shame from black americans of and i'm again speaking generally but you know shame from black americans because of the sins of the past we always get shame from europeans over anything you know how young we are or anything like that i mean and i to that i just always kind of go where i'm like oh well so you'd prefer like a computer from the 80s rather than a newer one because it's older and is part of history like i mean you know i know it's not the same thing as like comparing greek coliseums to the you know Washington monuments and stuff that are modeled after them, but you know we were sort of the upgrade to all of the good things yeah. that we took from England and ancient Rome and Greece, and we were supposed to be like the version 2.0 of that. And like, I I don't know, like for some reason they're like people have always hated on America, but it's I think it's done in a sort of envious type of way where it's like america and certain ideas here have led to lots of prosperity and lots of you know when people compare the health systems for example where they're like every other developed nation you know gives health care to everyone and this this and that and it's like okay but who's the one paving all the way as far as research and medical breakthroughs and drug patents and all of that and it's like us because we let people get rich off of it people are willing to do these innovations and everything like that like and trust me i have a love-hate relationship with the whole concepts behind intellectual property and everything like that as a musician 
you want to talk about censorship on YouTube? Like, and it would always piss me oh, off when, Lord. when Alex Jones or Paul Joseph Watson or all that. I mean, imagine uploading one of your own songs to YouTube and it blocks you from doing so because it, it's like, you might be violating your own copyrights on it. And it's like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, you're blocking me from uploading my song and telling me it's because I own it. Okay. I mean, that shit, I would upload a DJ mix to YouTube, not even try to monetize it, and it would come back and say, you know, and that was the whole reason why they didn't have monetization in the first part. Is, is, and that's when YouTube was fun, was anyone could just post or repost anything, and it was all fine and dandy because no one was getting any money off of it. But now that people are getting money off of it, if I upload an hour-long DJ mix, it will tell me what song I played and what I changed to at what exact moment. Like, that algorithm... It, it, it knows whose voices are yeah. whose, and I mean, I'm surprised they haven't even just blocked Alex Jones's voice off the platform. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Well, they have, because that, remember when that guy got pulled in his live stream, that big screen, page three, went past? Yeah. That thing's this, but there are channels that repost the InfoWars broadcast. I've, I've found a few that I watch on there. Yeah, those sh some of the shows though, like with the. Getting with tricky though. And really? the other is when you. Yeah. I expect it. Uh, well, I just think we're in strange days, so I kind of panic. Yeah, it's a weird ass time. I do not understand that Kavnatoch makes no sense at all. What did you say? Hi. You said what makes no sense? The Kavnatoch is some tough American formula. It just makes no sense. Oh, it's it's just the it's it's well the thing is is it's not e and and this is the other thing that bothers me is it's not a trial and the Democrats keep saying that this isn't a trial this isn't a criminal investigation it's a scarlet letter well and this is the thing that bothers me is they're they're outright claiming it's not a trial it's not this this is just a fact finding mission or yeah and like you were saying it's a public shaming it is I mean it's far worse than a trial because they are just endlessly trying to find accusations bring up anything throwing shit at the wall he's in, i mean it went from like he once flashed a girl at a party or grinded on her when he was drunk to he was leading a rape gang that was drugging girls and running train like it went from zero to a hundred in a week like and it's just like it's so much worse because this is their idea of social justice where it's like, instead of it being, you're accused of a crime, we're going to find the facts, we're going to do this, this, and that. It's like, we're just going to level rumors and allegations at you to the point where you are a pariah and will be excommunicated from, uh, communicated yeah. from society. It's what they tried on Roseanne, basically. It's so, it's so funny, though, because, like, like, I mean, it's not funny, but watching the whole thing, it's like he's... This guy is just like, he's just sitting here just yelling, sounding like a dog that's just, like, I mean, I feel bad for him, like a dog that's like, just getting whipped. Like Well, and the I other thing, yeah, 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 and that was the like, other thing, like, where when he got angry, they're, now they're taking issue with that, the fact that he like, got angry, and it's like, okay, so if he if he doesn't defend himself, he's guilty, but he get if he gets angry over the accusations, you then think he's guilty, yeah, too. Think he's guilty. Like, yeah. they just, they really just make it where it's like, they're gonna say what they're gonna say, and there isn't anything within their terms that you can do to win. I mean, it's like everyone needs a briefing on rules for radicals in, in order to understand how this is operating. And that's why I said the only thing we need to do is start leveling allegations at them. You need to fight fire with fire. This whole thing, and this is why they say Republicans always lose, because they're always on the defense, because of my principles. You can't, you can't, yeah. they, they're, yeah. they never go on the offense. They, they're never on the offense. And if they are, it's really t t ticky tacky, really. Yeah. yeah. It's not, it's not for anything that's like, for, like, I mean, it's the whole, equal it's concern. the whole reason why Bill Clinton is still just free, freely walking around and well, everything yeah, like that. Yeah. Why? When no, no heat ever got brought on Obama there's totally, there's or anything totally like that. There's totally scumbags around. Like, there have been scumbags around. There will continue to be. Tons of them. In the, I mean, you had people 
on that panel who have been convicted of sexually assaulting people, yeah. questioning Kavanaugh. Yeah. And it's like, what is wrong with this picture here? Yeah, it, the whole thing was it was like a really, really bad, like... Bad, it was it was like a bad 12 and a half men, or, or like, a, or whatever the hell, 12 angry men meets, like, malice with Alec Baldwin meets, like, it was really, like, it was like a bad movie you'd see on, like... USA Network at yeah. 3 in the morning. It, now, it my concern, horrible. though, is is the ripple effects of this. Because it's like, what message does this send to young men? That, you know, first off, the Democrats will lead this inquisition into She's how... going to go unpunished. Huh? She does, if, if everyone knows it's bullshit, right? She's just going to walk away completely on the challenge for unpunished. Well, I mean, the, yeah, there's the, there's not going to be a punishment, and he is going to end up confirmed, I think. But it's well. If you're as a, young, if you're as a woman, bitter, angry, you know, you've gone off the cliff. Why wouldn't you pull out the rape right card? I don't know why he didn't take the lie detector test. Why did he? Not They're take inadmissible. It? They're inadmissible. Yeah. Like the even with the. And the other thing, too, that came out, actually, about that woman's lie detector test is they asked her something where it's, like, it wasn't even asking her if, if like, the story was true. It was asking her if the testimony she gave at one point was correct. Like, they worded it really sneakily so that, like, she wasn't actually being asked if what she was claiming was true, but more along the lines of... If what she was saying then matched what she had said prior. Right. And she gave that same testimony on the day that her grandmother died. So, I mean, you'd think that would cause... All the lie detector does is measure physiological changes in, in heartbeat, heartbeat yeah. sweating, things like that. And, and then the they action. try to extract from that that physiological changes would be influenced by That's lying. Similar or your grandmother passing away yeah. that day yeah. the other funny thing though is her being like when they asked her about her saying she couldn't come to washington at first because she's afraid of flying and they were like but you've gone on vacations in hawaii and here and there and this this and that and her trying to say well that's different i mean like you're saying paul it's so it's such a sham and it's, it should be so obvious to anyone who doesn't just have an invested interest in gaining power how much of a sham this is. And that's why I say I think it's really going to end up rallying a red wave. Huh? No, but it's, it's again, ends justify the means. It doesn't matter if it's believable or not. The ends justify the means. And the Democrats really think if they can postpone this until... Let's just play devil's advocate. Let's say if it was true and she was really convinced them, what would that achieve in the long run, really? Here, here, well, here's what they're trying to achieve. No, here, here's, here's what it all boils down to is right now, the Republicans single-handedly, without the help of the Democrats, have enough votes to put Kavanaugh in period yeah and they could why they aren't i don't like know a, there's it's something like when you watch russia and they throw like a smoke grenade good. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like if the democrats can can get the fbi I to tie this up to vote. huh you, know, you need to cause a distraction like just tear gas to vote. <laughs> well well kind of yeah right. it's it's they want to Delay this until the midterms because then if the Democrats end up changing that balance where that they are the ones that can then single-handedly vote yes or no to Supreme Court picks, they're just going to vote no. So it's like he could be confirmed now single-handedly with the Democrats. I mean, it's the same thing as them trying to say, what was it, that uh, they were trying to say that when Obama... Some guy was leaving the Supreme Court right at the point of the elections where they were changing power and everyone was trying to say that Obama should have just came in right then and appointed someone. And that it would have been unprecedented because normally if that happens, you just leave it up for the next guy. Uh. But they, they wanted him to do it and they were pissed that Trump would have all these appointments to the Supreme Court to make. 
But that's the thing is they want this delayed and they're hoping that they end up with more votes than the Republicans in the House and the Senate after the midterm elections. So they just want to delay this, delay this, delay this until after the midterms. Then they get Catherine R. L. This is after I hope they're going to impeach Trump. And impeach Trump for what? Like, it's so crazy. Yeah. How it works. Well, and that's, that's the whole thing is I wonder to some extent how much, how much of this is them preying on the ignorance of the public in in just like like i said about like you know it's not even there's no charges this isn't even a trial this is just their quote unquote fact finding mission for their job interview or whatever and it's like i i really just think you know the end goal to these politicians is just to get in power and stay in power and that's why they're they're doing all this because it's like there's nothing in their track records where they can say, oh, well, I helped my community with X, Y, and Z. That's why you should keep me in office. Instead, they're just going to come out and say, like, Kamala Harris has taken out thousands of dollars in anti-Kavanaugh ads for her re-election. This is her re-election thing. I fought Kavanaugh. I'm against Trump. And it's like, that's their, their selling point. They still don't have a platform, so they're just going to try to sell themselves as, look at me being the resistance. It's ridiculous. I mean, one of the funniest things I saw is, you know that guy Amy Horowitz, who does the, uh, the videos where he'll go up and question people, and, you know, he did a really good one about black people and voting ID laws, and all of them are like, they, they go to, all, he went to all these white people, and he are like, what do you think about voting ID laws? And they're all like, well, they're racist. Because, you know, like, black people, they can't find the DMV. They might not know how to work the internet. So like, black people. Bigotory yeah, like, so then he goes around and interviews black people. And they're like, yeah, I got my ID. I got my ID with me at all times. I got it now. You need it to buy cigarettes and alcohol. You need it if you're driving. You need it for this. Of course I got an ID. I'd be fine with an ID yeah. to vote. He went around and he interviewed people about Kavanaugh and they were, he went to them and he said, did you hear that Kavanaugh wants to bring back the, uh, three fifths rule about blacks and he wants to take away women's rights to vote. And they're all looking at him and be like, I can't believe it, but I don't doubt it because I know they're evil. And he's like, they'd believe anything about yeah. him because they are sold this nefariously evil view of all Republicans where you could say that's like. You know, he wants to mandate that, you know, black people are, you know, forced to do labor work or something. It's like that commercial you see for Anthony Delgado, who is, like, running for Congress, and they say because he put out a rap album when he was in college that was, like, on some conscious stuff that, like, he's not fit for the government. He spits bars. <laughs> like, it was like, what? Like, it, it, it was just... Like, without any, like, talk about policy or anything. Yeah. He put out a mixtape that, like, nobody got. Like, yeah. They, they found it and dug it up. There is, like, and you know, it's, it's again, <laughs> this is why the Republican Party has become the party of, like, the everyman party. Because it's like, you know, if you looked at the presidential exactly. nominations or the, when they were running, it was like Ben Carson, brain surgeon, Carly Fiorina, business person, uh... Rand Paul, I forget what he was originally, but Ron Paul is a gynecologist. Yeah. Like, yeah. You, you have a party where it's like all of these people have actual other, other jobs. jobs. Yeah, they're they're not career politicians. No. And then not the Democrats all. have this basic attitude though, where it's like you have to have been a career politician or a lawyer. Those are the two they'll allow. And I mean, there's a saying people say, never that's trust wrong. a lawyer. Yeah, that's, that's really, I was just about to say that. Yeah. Never trust a lawyer. So, okay, so we want our whole, and I've always said that is that is the most glaring conflict of interest that I think you could ever have. Why do you want your whole political legal structure being dictated and created by lawyers? It's like, would you, would you trust 
the medical manufacturers and drug companies to regulate medical manufacturing and drug companies? No. That's why we have government organizations doing that. Now, they're failing at it, and they're all working on behalf of the drug companies, and it basically is like the drug companies yeah. regulating the drug companies at this point. Yeah. But, point still standing, you, you can't expect, it's like, what, what's the saying? Asking the foxes to guard the hen house? Yeah. Like, that's what's going on. Yep. That's really what's Move going like on. the chicken in the hen house or the rooster in the hen house. Yep. Yeah. Where it's yeah. like, I mean, I just, I am so sick of lawyers in the lawmaking process. Where it's like, what do you think they're doing besides cluttering up the system so all their Harvard buddies have meaningless and endless statutes and regulations and everything else to go after everyone for? That's like, yeah... That's essentially what it's become. Yeah. I mean, even look at what just happened with a friend of ours. A friend of ours was out at a bar, had a bag of Coke on him. The cops, pull, he was in a, in a parked car. The cops impounded the car as if he was driving it. Then, you know, uh, we talked about this last week, actually, Paul. Um, But then they, like, they could have just hit him with a possession charge. But instead, they hit him with possession, resisting arrest tampering with evidence like anything and everything they just tried to stick on there and it's like if we didn't like honestly when i look at issues like police brutality and the over policing of people it's because we've had lawyers creating all of these endless amounts of laws that they can just use to go after people sure. this is going to sound weird but the system of that cannot be illegal because you're meant to receive I think it's using violence or causing a dangerous situation. How can there be any loss if you can't resist the rest? Yeah. There's, there's obviously already a loss and you can't snatch it off, you can't try and kill it. Like you, maybe you can't run off because they're armed. But resist an arrest, what does that mean? I don't get what that means. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't even know. There was... I, I'm sure 99% of people <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. No one's going to want to go willingly. I got, I got, I got hit with that. And then, oh, wait, wait, never mind. I got hit with that, even though no charges got stuck. I, everything got dropped, but I got hit with that at one point in time. They were trying to hit, were trying to hit me with that, and I was sitting down with my hands above my head, waiting yeah, maybe, for them to maybe, come, maybe willingly ready yeah. to go. Maybe the cops can only win that if they find you guilty, and that's a crime. Then. Once they find they can tag that on. Yeah, That's yeah. That's exactly what it is. It's it's a, just in case they have. And you know what the thing is, is for every one of those charges, it's cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. Get it? Get the yeah. Money. Like if they want it, yeah, they, they can do do it under the guise of that. Yeah. Well, and that's the other thing where it's like the the other my other big problem with the whole system in general is you know the the idea of the quota system where you know it used to be rumored that cops were more out giving speeding parking tickets and all that stuff at the end of the months and people would say it's because they have quotas they have to have a certain amount in and everything there was one story actually i think i i feel like it was a caller on alex jones i wish i saved it and bookmarked it somewhere because it was the most powerful talk i had ever heard from a cop where he said and he was a former cop because he quit after this incident. He had a woman come in and said she was raped. And he said, okay, tell me what you know about the incident. She said, there was a big SUV in the driveway. I remember seeing a case of beer, uh, a bed with a, you know, a certain pattern on the sheets and all of this stuff. Like she knew all these details and she gave them to the cop and he was like, all right, well, let's bring you to the doctor. They're going to do the rape kit. So, um, and she also said something about a white picket fence in a housing complex or something. So, brings her to the doctors. They do the rape kit. Um, he drops her off at home. Then on his way driving back, he passes a housing complex with a white picket fence. So, he goes there. Notices one with a big SUV in the driveway. Goes there, too. Now... Very cunningly, because at this point he doesn't have a warrant or anything like that. He's talking to the person at the house. He's like, oh, you know, how's it going? Oh, I see I see a case of beer on the floor back there. You know, uh, 
we're, we're just investigating some things. You mind if I step in for a moment? The guy invites him in. So, you know, he's not violating anything. He was welcomed into the house. So he doesn't, doesn't need a warrant. He ends up seeing... Yeah, yeah. So he then ends up seeing the bed sheets that match the bed and everything like that. He arrests the guy. It was the guy. The guy gets charged for the rape. Now, his his leading, the person who's above him goes to him and says, yeah, you know, it's all fine and well that you solved the rape, but it doesn't count because you didn't have enough civilian interactions. Which means, yeah, exactly. you know, talking exactly. to the doctor was one, yep. talking to the guy you arrested is they another, and the woman, but, you know, if he had talked to one of her sisters and someone else in the complex, well, then it would have been good and it would have met their quota, yep. but because it didn't, solving the case is secondary. Yep. And that's when he was like, this system is broken. Yep. I can't do this. We're not, we're not even concerned with whether or not we're solving cases. We're concerned with how many people we bother and harass. How many hours put in. In, in the sake of justifying our funding. Yep. And yep. that's the whole thing, because... A if, lot of places like that. A lot, a lot of, of... I mean, imagine if you have a... Run off of that. Imagine yep. if you have a small town that doesn't have a lot of crime or anything like that. Well, oh, then why do you have a police force? Narragansett, Rhode Island, man. The, the big... Their, their big section, the big to-do over there is a kid puts a quarter in a freaking telephone booth and the telephone yes. booth spits out uh, quarters at him. That's the, that's the, 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 the <coughs> and they're trying to figure out that, like, mystery. Like, if that's the biggest news in Narragansett, Rhode Island, I want to move there. Like, it's a peaceful spot. <laughs> like, yeah, but it's like, you can't, to do around there. you can't justify paying all these people to sit around and twiddle their thumbs for the crimes that aren't happening. Yeah. And that's why they have it structured like this, where there's basically an incentive to create criminals out of everyday people. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's why they say they say the whole thing, you know, oh, well, when weed gets decriminalized, you know, you're going to end up letting out half the prison population. Yeah, and we can end up firing half the cops. Not firing them, but laying them off, laying basically. Them off. Because yeah. what are they going to be doing? Yeah. Yeah. Like, or, or it's like for every... For every weed bust you had happen, you're just going to see more and more seatbelt tickets and, yeah, you'll you know, see speeding tickets. Of... You'll see, you'll just see it evened out elsewhere because for them, it's all about the bottom line. You know, to the window, yeah. This is a giant mistake of falling for a trap, I reckon, because if everyone wants to legalize, they're all going to go for that. And then that's going to be regulated. And part of the regulation will be, well, if you smoke weed, you have to give up these rights. And those rights will be like, can't own a gun, you can smoke weed. Uh, they can restrict it from like driving because you smoke weed. They're probably trying to get parents in. So you're not going to do this one. Parents can smoke weed. I think this cannabis is going to end up being a bad idea. Well, I just don't trust government with anything. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, you know I'm with you as far as that goes. I mean, that's why I think they should just, you know, instead of trying to legalize and regulate and tax it, I think they should just decriminalize they it. They should just all around just... You know, that way it's like, just leave curtain. it to people where it's like, where it could be like any other crop, where you can just go to the farmer's market and buy it, rather than a, dis a, a one of these distribution centers yeah. that's got government paperwork no be, and all like, that trying stuff. Trying to rob each other, or if anybody's, I everybody's did think, growing it. Like. Well, and the other thing too, yeah, exactly. If everyone's able to grow it, no one's going to be, no robbing, be robbing, each robbing each other. But when you have it in these dispensaries, <laughs> like I saw one recently where people broke into a dispensary and tried to rob it, and all they left with was a couple. A uh, couple ounces of oregano because they don't yep. put any real yep. shit in the display cases. Yep. Huh? I was hearing that like the top top grade weed in uh, California is selling for like fifty dollars an ounce. Yeah. There's just so much weed. Yeah, yeah. That's why I only buy now when I have friends from like out of state passing Stop through. through. Yeah, yeah because it's like I I'll just get a ton for so cheap. That it's like, why even, why would I want to go to anyone around here? That's what anybody would do, you know? I got friends that fucking backpack and live in their cars for months, and it's like, 
they'll pass through somewhere like Colorado and just grab shit. And I mean, funny story, even I had a friend who, who did that and they searched the whole car. And by the time they found that they only had two ounces going from Colorado through a different state, they were just like, Oh shit, this isn't anything worth our time. Like <laughs> we thought we were going to find like kilos of Coke or something. And they were like, Nope, just two ounces of pop. They were hoping to find some human trafficking or some shit. Yeah. That, some shit that would break the bank for, for them. When are you using the drop ticket? Huh? Drop tickets like an apartment, man. Drop tickets, huh? You should go to Am Amsterdam? <laughs> I don't know. I could probably swing it sometime in the spring. Yeah, that's where I'm leaning. It'd have to be while uh, while the while college is still in session, so my one job has extra employees. Summers are hard because it's just me there. You can make such a cool film as well. Yeah, definitely. In, in England, like it's mainly their boilers, but cannabis is getting crazy here now because I didn't even know this. They changed the law. Huh. So uh, what is it now? Basically, it is, when you read the law, it's legal. Really? Wow. Yeah, but you know that cops... Oh, shit. Hold on. Not, not going to get arrested, it's going to get fixed. When you read it, it's in four categories. So if you're growing, you can have up to nine plants. Okay, right. Yeah, to kind of have the states do it. Any kind of uh, criminal activity. And then for your own use, it's 100 grams. Oh, wow. And they pretty much said that street dealing isn't like an issue. That's where, like, the no, like, that's Wow. Where that, and that's it's like production and industrial where it's a problem. Theresa May's husband has got a cannabis farm. But we import most, You're right. most cannabis from Europe. We've got massive cannabis import. Our export, sorry, like, we export tons of cannabis. Like medical cannabis. Yep. And that medical cannabis is grown here. And that's yep. Theresa May, our, pre our prime minister's husband. Yep. So yep. I don't know how long they're going to keep up for. And now we've got all these cannabis coffee shops opening up everywhere. Oh, sure. Of them, yeah, one of them is pretty posh. I mean, they must have invested. <coughs> in yeah. They're making it like it's like a lounge, like a, like a straight, like, like elegant lounge that you go yeah. to yeah, it's shit. like it's not it's not a head shop well one of the things that did that did bother me though that i saw a while back is you know who's very 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 invested in uh legalizing and getting marijuana in the states is uh george soros yeah oh really yeah and now yeah, uh, it's already done it in switzerland and the way that's they sell it like Marlboro cigarettes. Yeah. It's, got, it's all CBD and like no THC. And it's like, yeah, great. That's what I'm wanting the cannabis clubs here. Like, I'm trying to go to them. Because a lot of them are trying to push the CBD only bar. And look, it's legal. Look, we can sell this. I mean, they, they do that around here, too, where yeah. it's like, <coughs> you can go to smoke shops and buy... You can go to smoke shops and buy vaporizer stuff with... Uh, you're out of data now and safety. I, I've had mobile data shut off. What? It was supposed to be shut off. Um, okay. Uh, uh, they invite you to the club. Yeah. Huh. Well, you know, it's I, I think it's interesting. A friend of mine actually just went on vacation to Japan, and he was talking about how hard weed is to get over there and how their culture is very much against it. But there's certain areas where it's like, it's basically like the Wall Street areas of Japan where there's a lot of people from like England and America over there. And he said those areas are like a hotbed of coke. But they sort of allow it because they look at coke as being like a productive drug. Yeah, weed's a lazy drug. Weed's a lazy drug, and that's why they're all against it. And that's why I'd say, 
I, I don't think weed is for everyone. Like, you know, I, I'm very sort of like ADHD hyperactive myself, so it helps me with some things, but then there's other times where it just makes me worthless. And I mean, that's good for me, like someone who doesn't have a relaxed setting, that there's something I can do yeah, to relax force with, myself yeah. into that mode. But... I mean, some of these people where it's like, I just worry about it when it's, when it becomes escapism for people where yeah. it's like, you know, their life sucks. So they're just smoking to try to get through the day. And it's like, yeah. there's better way. That's not a fix for a problem. Yeah. Like that's, so, I mean, it becoming readily available for people like that. I don't know if that's the best case. Yeah, because then, you know, people become their own doctors and shit, too. Like, yeah. Like, you know, oh, yeah, I've, I've got, but I, I've got this and that. And then, I mean, unless there, there, there would have to be a clinical process, I'm sure. Like, I've always thought it's funny whenever I hear people saying they're doing it for... Because like, I have heard... Now, I have heard CBD is really good for pain. Right. And athletics, like, people... Like, a lot of UFC fighters... After they're fighting and stuff like that, we use CBD because it helps them recover. Right. But I know whenever, like, my Lyme is acting up and I'm feeling, like, achy and arthritis -y, if I smoke, it just intensifies it. Like, really? I don't even want to move. Wow. Uh, yeah, it definitely doesn't help with that. Yeah. So it's like, I've always wondered when people are like, oh, it helps with my ache or this pain or whatever so, and i'm like are really? you serious yeah. like my <laughs> idea of helping with that is getting me to a point where i can do stuff as if i didn't have that problem yeah. like i guess if you want to just be able to lay down and not it's like a toll you have to go and toll and it's like wake and bake 420 and it's like a celebration of a drug addiction yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. It's interesting. The freaking, yeah, they're uh, all kind of like, they're all commies as well. Like, which pub you go to, they are like, um, they say they're not political, but they claim they are. I just don't think they realize. I've seen it, I, somebody told me that if they, if you use it, like, once, like, every couple of days it's medicine but then if you but if you use it all the time and you always have to be baked all the time and you spend your entire day baked and not productive that it's a drug or if it leads to another drug it's a drug i was like yeah well it's like the difference between being a social drinker or an alcoholic yeah. Like it, it it's all it's all sort of based on like are you able to function without it? Yeah. Like and if not, you know, then it can be a problem. Yep. If you're able to do what you need to do, you know, then it's fine. Yep. Like I, I remember even there was a girl at the house one time and she was talking about her family members and she was like, I didn't realize they were functional crackheads. Like that you could be like high on crack and like doing your job <laughs> like and stuff like that do you remember hearing about cracks either the cracks giving thanksgiving dude the guy with his family the, oh yeah yeah the family's the all family, sitting the family around crack thanksgiving <laughs> family is all sitting around a plate of crack cocaine and they're all just <laughs> that's one of the funniest ideas it's just like, no gravy no stuffing <laughs> No turkey. Just cocaine. Just on a rotating table. Like. <laughs> That's too funny. They must have been just looking out the window every five minutes. And I really wonder, though, is that going to be next? Like, because if, if you know, people say this is a slippery slope idea, but it's like, it, I almost feel like there's so much precedence now with these sort of 
groups being like, you know, we want this done, we need these rights, we need this legalized, and then the moment it happens, it's like they don't lose a beat and they just pick the next thing. thing where it's like, you know, like, and people say the LGBTQ thing is the best example of that, where it's like, we want gay rights, we want equality, and it's like, okay, you got that. Well, now trans people need the right to the bathroom, and it's like, no one has a right to a bathroom. Like, this is ridiculous now. Like, I remember even having a conversation with someone where I said, you make jokes out of yourselves because you talk about right, you talk about privileges like they're rights. What rights do trans people need? And they immediately said, bathroom and, you know, the right of the support of their teachers or something like that. I said, both of those are privileges. Like I said, if you want there's no agenda. Yeah. Not really. And, and it's like everywhere you look, like I was reading articles about how against climate it's like down, 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 how plastics are fucking people's um that's basically what the gender bender problem. Yeah. BPA, it's like all the gender bender. And if you're a kid, you're just screwed. Well and that's one of the <laughs> other and that's one of the real interesting things that you have with some of these liberals where they'll be like, oh, I only use BPA-free plastics because of the estrogens. And then meanwhile, they're like, but a little boy, we can pump full of estrogen if he wants to wear lipstick. It's like, okay, so you acknowledge that this is bad for your health, but you think we can overdose someone on it if we want them... Monkey. Monkey. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. uh -oh. Sorry, my niece just bursted into the room. We have a baby visitor. We just gotta change. Oh, yeah, you're doing, you're doing the Roger Rabbit? <laughs> yes, it's Yes. What was that? I think I can open the gates to hell, man. Yeah. I feel like it's already been opened, like, and it's... That's in the news today, the scientists are warning me that the Earth could shrink to 330 foot because of Pan. Oh. That the so Earth could shrink? Yeah, put in Google, Earth shrink 330 foot, and you could do a warning from the Earth. The Earth could shrink? It's always it's always good news when we read about him. We're about to go we're about to go get it's small. About to be it's like that uh Steve Martin sketch gets uh, I wanna get small instead of getting Earth could shrink to three hundred and thirty foot across and particle accelerator. If particle accelerator experiments <laughs> fail. Now, uh, I don't want to be skeptical or pessimistic, but when it comes to can, uh, just mankind doing experiments and then failing. Could happen, couldn't it? I mean, it's not if the accelerator experiments fail. Lots of experiments fail. Oh, yeah. Yeah, everything I read about can is just very uh, What is it? Um, oh, current. Right, right. Yeah, and you know, I, I don't even understand, like, the benefits of what they're, you know, for them to be like, it's going to give us understanding. For them to just continually go to, we're going to be able to understand reality. We're going to be able to understand, you know, it's like, I don't understand necessarily how my computer sends data to the monitors and then to the <laughs> speakers. I know how to enjoy it. Maybe we should just enjoy it if we're going to risk shrinking the earth to a couple feet. Like. Wait, they're actually. The, oh my gosh. Oh, I can't read it all unless you pay. It's not a small enough world after all. No, I, I have got one way, don't I? It's on your head if you don't pay for it. Uh, I'm going to rewrite the song. It's not a small enough world after all. CERN are just always dodgy, like, when they said, oh, we're just taking it in the four ways, but no, I don't know what they meant. Man, that one they picture of the crazy Yes album, go. 
Oh, the Hedron Collider. Yeah. They've got them in America. There's about six of them in America, too. Oh, the, um, a, the HCs or whatever the hell. Uh, yeah, th those things. Yeah. Everybody's like, when it, when it starts spinning around, it's going to open up the ground. They've already opened it, dude. They've opened up the portal? I reckon, yeah. Things are getting too fucking weird. There's no explanation how things got so weird so quick. Well, yeah, I, I, I know. I, I, you know what it is, I though. I know what you mean. It, but the, I think part of it I is what going to do. Bill Cosby. <laughs> well, I was going to say. Pizza Gate, Marina, Bramovich getting hit. You see, I'm getting hit with a painting. Yeah. This fucking it's just getting crazy. Some of these things, though, I think what it is is you know you have um where they they when they chart out human timelines and stuff when you have certain breakthroughs. Things start to go exponentially. Yeah. That's where it's true. like, you know, like when the printing press came, well, then yeah. that went exponential, you know, and then like the internet came. So we're now seeing the exponential growth of the digital technologies and everything like that, where it doesn't go linear. It just no. sort of explodes outward, where it's like. They figured it out. Uh, yeah. A couple, a couple breakthroughs then lead to hundreds of breakthroughs. Hundreds of breakthroughs then lead to tens of thousands of breakthroughs. Tens of thousands then lead to millions. Like it goes very quickly in that oh, yeah. sort of fashion. It's almost to the point that innovation is like almost like out, like almost out in in, in like overabundance like yeah it's innovation it's like, well yeah yeah i mean even you know again the idea in a 20 year span of time unfortunately we don't see it as much with automobiles as you would right. expect but i mean look at computers nowadays where it's like i mean i remember for a while like when tablets first came out it was like here's a tablet now here's the newer, newer better one. tablet here's, here's a newer, newer better newer. one but then they started scaling it back where they're like we don't even need to put all this stuff in it because people aren't using half the stuff in it we can just make them cheaper and cheaper and cheaper where now you can go to like a gas station practically and buy a tablet for 30 bucks go to dollar general and get a tablet and a drone yeah like you you, 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 you make your own drone net blog i mean it's not going to be the greatest of quality but it, the stuff is now just cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and yep. cheaper these are the little track phones those are basically mini tablets now yeah pretty much even my phone like you know i hadn't had one for five years almost and then i get this one and i'm like all right i understand why everyone is using these so much it's like a laptop in my hand yep like and they even now have a dock thing I could get for it where I could use my phone as the trackpad and it would basically act as a computer for my monitor. Yep. Like, it's ridiculous. Yep, yep. But the stuff just gets cheaper and cheaper and more available and it's like for every innovation we're seeing on the consumer level, they've got something behind the scenes that is the next, out of this world the type next shit. One up. Yeah. They always have the next one up when they put the next one down out on the market. Yeah. That's, like a, that's a very... Well, that's I've always said that about... Always automobiles, everything. I said that about to my mom. It's funny. Within like a week span of time, I told her that what she thinks are the cameras on the uh, street lights and stuff, and she thinks they're just taking pictures of license plates. No. That it's some, and I'm no. like, no, they got facial recognition. They know who's walking down the road. How and many everything times, like that. What time they did. Yeah. And she was like, no, they, they couldn't have that. They don't have that technology. Well, then a few days later, she goes on Facebook and she's like, Facebook is trying to auto tag everyone's pictures. Yeah. Like, she they, they knows this one's you and that one's you and that one's. I said, Mom, if Facebook is giving you facial recognition software for free, yeah. you damn well, well better believe that every other more practical useful application for it is has already been done. used yeah. like they're not going to give you this powerful tool for you to mark no your facebook way. friends if the cops don't have it on their camera network already yep yep 
And the funny thing is, at least, like, uh, thankfully around in our area, we, you know, they're not using it to be invasive of, like, people's privacy. They're actually doing it for safety in our area. Like, and rightfully so. But, uh, like, I can see how, yeah, it's, it's you know, anytime that happens, yeah, they, they got the whole gamut covered with that. Yeah. You're going to have to become a new citizen. I don't know where it is in Europe, but you're going to be a new citizen. I think that's going to be the global plan to get the new world order in us. You're going to have to be on the You're going to have like an internet agent somewhere. You know, you know what, that reminds me though, to bring it back to the Kavanaugh thing, I think this is socially laying precedence for the sort of chinese online social score type thing you know have we talked about that where it's like you'll be given like a credit score but basically it's your citizen score yeah and and like it's your personal ethic and integrity score basically yeah, like, and now in yeah. china they have that already yeah and it's they, like if, if you're friends with someone that talks against the party you know it brings down your score and it, it basically yeah, yeah. And and that's it, where the term, the stock of your family name. Yeah. Comes from, or the stock of name. And it, it basically incentivizes you to cut ties with the people viewed as social pariahs. And, you know, if someone's accused of racism, don't talk to them anymore. I This whole Kavanaugh thing, I think, really starts to lay the precedence for something like that, where it's like... If 30 years down the road, we're going to be judging people over how many beers they drank in high school. That's the, well, th that's the thing that kills me is the fact they spent like a good hour. I mean, the sound of his voice, too, is at that timber that just gets to me, man. He sounds like, he, like he's in pain. Yeah. Like just yelling at And I'm sure it is painful for him, but it's like, I'm like hearing it like, beers and beers. Like, did you have a beer? Beer, no beers. He's like, but but did you have a beer? I did not have a beer and ruined my life. Like, well, and the, <laughs> and the, well, the I'm thing they, the thing it. is it's though is again you got to think of them. They're all sneaky con man lawyers. They want him to admit Poor that there guys. might be a moment er. when he was under the influence that he doesn't remember. Because if there was one second of time that he was drunk that he doesn't remember. Well, he might have raped someone during that second. That's he doesn't window, remember. That's the window of rape opportunity. Yeah, that's the window of rape opportunity. Like, that's what they were pushing for that whole time with that. Oh, gosh. Good Lord. I tell you, I tell you, I just... Yeah, man, that whole trial, I just... I just was... I, I, not even trial, whatever the hell it was. I'm just like, what the Jesus is going on? right now like and, and man it's not gonna end with that though the, 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 it's, it's it's just begun unfortunately yeah well yeah cause I heard one of these fucking dickhead senators or whatever agreed to uh agreed to an investigation like full on investigation into this shit right Yep. But, all right, well, <clears throat> do we want to call it a wrap for the day? Yeah, I think I, my prediction is this October. Crazy. I think this is the, you know, the quiet before the storm. Yep. I think it's going to be a giant October surprise. This time last year, we were looking at Las Vegas, weren't we, I guess? So last yeah. October was fucking crazy. Right? Oh, my God, yeah. Last October, you're right. It, it was just like, seems like it's been so calm for a couple of weeks, you know. It's because it, I've I've noticed, been like, particularly in our area, the police have been like up and down and up and down and stopping everybody and like they they, they want tabs on everyone and everything. I mean, and it's understandable, like given the fact that last year around this time some pretty buck wild shit happened around here, but. Like, you, they're definitely on their one... They're, they're ten toes down now, like... Hold on to your hat, man. I reckon... This always happens. You don't have to put the phone down to change. 
shit hits the fan. It's always like right in the bottom half. Yeah. The big thing is the hammer alerts in our area. Actually, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, funny you mentioned that. I guess I guess Garth uh, had talked to some of my family members. I guess there's big human trafficking going on in our yep, area, yep. in this whole area, because he's been keeping an eye out. Even the other day, my niece was outside talking <laughs> to someone that, uh, and he popped out and was like, "Do you know that person?" Like making sure, like he's keeping our block yeah. on lockdown yeah. as far as he knows who's coming and going and. Everything like that. Like, I better not have any shady suspects coming or going yeah, here no. lately. Huh? Get the guy signed in, get your drug dealers signed in. Man. Yeah, right? Yeah, well, I, if anything, at least at least my my cop neighbor is very libertarian. Like I said, his his priorities are heroin and guns. And as long as there's none of that coming through my area, I'm all right. Yeah, and I just gave him a bunch of tomatoes, so he should be happy with me. I'm feeding his family. <laughs> but all right, man, well, let's all right. let's do it again next yeah. week, and we can see what sort of shit pops off once we hang up. It's gonna get started in Europe. I think Trump's leading you guys into a war, man. Seriously. Ah. Uh... I don't, I don't, I mean, the thing is, is there's, there's no talks of it over here. So I don't see yeah, how they could like, just spring about... it on the American people being like. Yeah, it's not spring on you guys. Like, if you start doing this um, chemical red line crap thing, calling a silent animal, I think it's all building up in the Middle East. It's not making good. It's Maybe. But I'll tell you what, we would need something because all the things I've been seeing lately is that enrollment in all the services are da is down. Yeah. Because no one sees a need to do it. And I mean, after Bush, when Bush was in president and the towers came down, you had people lining up to go to war. Yeah. They, 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 people, yeah. So, I don't know. I don't think we'll have a, a huge false flag like that under Trump, but I could be wrong. You know, again, there are some of these networks that are in place that were there before him that he hasn't drained the swamp completely, as we can see. So, and I mean, the other thing is the president, I've, I've said this all through the election when people were freaking out, the president is nowhere near as powerful as people like to imagine he is. Well, yeah. He's not even supposed to make law. He's the execu executive. But, all right, well, I'll talk to you later, man. Have a good one.